Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art, and today introducing a new series that I'm doing. Sometimes color gets in the way. And when you're studying art, and even when you've been doing art for some time, working with color can be difficult. But a great solution to that is to create in black and white and shades of gray using charcoal pencils and graphite pencils, pastels. I created this image from the photograph on the left. I started with this photograph of a cane someone left at a tree, reduced it, and then desaturated it to use as my reference photo. I used black drawing paper from Canson. It's 9 by 12 inches. I used white pan pastel, soft rounded applicator tool, a baton applicator, Soline white chalk pencil, Zerwent titanium white pencil, and a black charcoal pencil to create a lovely drawing of a tree in black and white. I use the sew line pencil to draw in my lines and now I'm using the pastel to fill in the shades. And I'm working as I rub away, you'll see that you go from white to gray to black. I like working on black paper with white it adds a new dimension. It's very interesting. And I'm not working something that shows you a, a backlit object as is frequently done with black and white work. This is really more of a black and white drawing without filling in the background. I'm using the rounded tool. I'll be using the rounded tool for most of the project. I lay in the white pastel and what I'm interested in doing is creating form from light and shade. I'm creating contrast by adding light as opposed to adding darkness. When you have difficulty with color, the greatest difficulty is always creating tonal value and creating contrast through light and shadow. But when you work in black and white, it's so much easier to see what it is that needs to be done to build form, to create a three-dimensional image. And that is why I always enjoy working in black and white. I do work in color. I have for many, many years. But when I started out, I started as a pencil person. I was about two years old. And my mother gave me uh, old photographs and cards to scribble on. And for many of us, pencil was our first medium. For others, they just went right to crayons. Well, that wasn't me. I started with pencil. I worked on crayons later, and I got pretty good at coloring. But it's not the same as trying to build a three-dimensional image out of color. That takes a little bit more knowledge of color theory understanding better cools and light colors, analogous colors, complementary colors. And, and sometimes it can be so overwhelming. When you open a box of 72 colored pencils, you just have no idea where to start. It's beautiful, but how do you get started? Well, that's where limited palettes come in handy, and I'll be doing more on limited palettes since I generally work that way. But in this series, I'm working in black and white and shades of gray. As you can see, I'm adding more and more white, blending it in. And then using the black charcoal pencil to add in other details and shading. And then I'll be working back and forth with the baton to blend that out. I don't want hard lines, but I want to create form using light and shadow.
I took this photograph at the Botanical Garden, and the cane just happened to be leaning against it saying, hi, take a photo of me. I'm a wonderful composition. And it was right. It is a wonderful composition. And I think I'm calling this piece, I don't need it anymore, or I don't need this anymore, because obviously whoever left the cane there really didn't need it anymore. Just adding creases and bark lines in the tree. And some shadow. And then blending that in. Now, while it's obvious that this is a tree, it's not going to grow up to be a photorealistic tree or a hyper-realistic tree. It's going to have its own character, its own personality. I've made it a little bit gnarlier. And while the tree in my photo leaned a little more to the left, this one only has a very slight lean because it's got a cane supporting it. And what's really lovely in working on black paper with essentially one color is that you can work back and forth. Uh, the pastel erases beautifully if you have too much there. I'm using a Derwent titanium white pastel pencil. And if I wanted to, I could actually have done the entire thing with the titanium pencil and the charcoal pencil. When you're working in this method, very few products are necessary. And that makes the whole process so much easier. It's your hand on the pencil or the pastel and your hand and your eye coordinated to create a new image and you don't have to worry about what color goes where because yeah sometimes color does get in the way sometimes you don't know if you should use a red blue or a blue red a real flat out purple or maybe that's not the color at all and what you want is ultramarine blue in that background and it takes practice and it's not something that can't be learned unless your issue is that you're colorblind and even then you can learn. Uh, but the process of color theory is something that can be learned. But the most important part of creating realistic art is understanding form. Now the sew line is uh, chalk pencil, mechanical pencil, that you, that's used in uh, working on sewing patterns and fabric. And it erases pretty easily. A while back I got this mechanical pencil kit and kick and I have a complete set of mechanical pencils with various um, hardnesses of two millimeter lead. Is it two millimeter? I think I think that's it. Anyway, it's a pretty thick lead. And then I thought, well, how wonderful to have a mechanical pencil that has white. And I looked for it and there this was. I was very pleased to find it. I've enjoyed using it. It comes with extra refills. So it'll last me a while and it has a wonderful little eraser on the end there. Yeah, just adjusting the angle and positioning of the handle of the, the cane.
And I'm going to erase out that area so I can bring up the black of the paper rather than filling it in with the charcoal. And just filling up some, di some detailing with the titanium white and then bringing back the black charcoal so that I can tone it down a bit. We just move back and forth adding highlight and adding shade. Again, you can see as I blend the pastel, pastel down that it does create light dark and that creates a cylindrical look of the cane. When I was studying art in college, I really had difficulty working with color in the beginning. And we studied a variety of painting methods from the old masters. One of them was the grise, which is painting in shades of gray. And the idea afterwards would be that you would glaze over color, but we didn't do that. We were just doing the grise. And my teacher had commented on how much more mature this work appeared than the painting that I had done using colors. And I realized at that moment how really important it was to understand and deal with contrast. And from there on, uh, I, I learned more about color and better understood how to use color to my advantage in creating form and in creating light and dark. But I still love to draw. I always love to draw. My favorite medium now is pastel, but I like working in with graphite pencils and water soluble pencils and raffi tints and all kinds of wonderful medium that can be manipulated and spread out and and smudged. And I do like getting my fingers involved in my pastel work. I do have smudge tools. I have blending tools, but my fingers are probably my favorite tool in working with pastels. And what I'm doing now is just adding little leaves and decoration on the cane itself. I really couldn't tell looking at the photograph if they were butterflies or birds or leaves or flowers. So I just decided to go with leaves on the cane since it was leaning against a tree.
and I'm just patting, I'm not rubbing, I'm just patting down the uh, charcoal so that it blends in to the Kang. And then adding some highlights, the reflection from the sunlight. This was, this photograph was taken about one o'clock in the afternoon. And this is a, a common cane. You can find it at any drugstore or something similar or um, pharmacy. I had to stop to sharpen my pencil. It was getting a little dull. Which is why mechanical pencils are so great. Although I actually do have teeny tiny sharpeners that I will show you at some time in the future for sharpening my lead pencils. But when you're working with mechanical pencils, you really don't have to be concerned about sharpening them. You can just continue your work and don't stop. You just have to be concerned about when you run out of the lead. But I have lots of extra lead, so I'm in good shape. And I'm going to bring up the grass. First, I'm using the black charcoal. Then I'll come back with the white, which and blending one on top of the other will create very very shades of gray and now i'm using the baton to blend those out soften their appearance Add a few more white highlights, a little light on those blades of grass. I'm going to move that up so you can see better. Now the photograph, this tree has a lot of sap stains and guano stains. And I didn't see that it was necessary to have anything on the tree like that. I was really more interested in the interesting curves and lines of the tree. Now I'm going to erase the area below the handle so that I can create the shadow. I do like rendering. I do like drawing and highlighting using an eraser.
and this pencil is just a little bit darker than the paper so I'm able to add a little bit more contrast here And if you're a plain arrow artist, this is actually something that could have been done on the spot. I find that I'm not especially fond of the plain arrow process, mostly because I keep being bitten by insects and it gets to be too hot and too humid because it's summertime in Florida. So I'm going to have to try that again when the temperatures drop and the bugs move north. I don't know, do the bugs move north? Do they migrate? I don't know. The birds do, but we but this is Florida, so we always have birds of some kind here. And I'm just adding a little more white to make that gray a little darker or appear to be a little bit darker. There we go. And I have finished. I thank you for joining me. I hope you're going to try something working with white pastels on black paper or just white pencils on and white charcoal on black paper. I will be showing you some more because sometimes color does get in the way and I do want to share more techniques for working in black and white. And here's our completed piece. Thank you, and I'm Joan Manson, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.